In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the LabVIEW QRAM client via package manager package. So what you do need to do is to get a hold of the client package. You can either download it from that queue or get it on the LabVIEW tools network. And just click on it and the VIA package manager will open like this. And just press install and it will automatically install to any LabVIEW version from 2010 and up. The next thing we need to do is to install the QRM web service. After we have installed the client, either a LabVIEW client or a testing client, we need to install the QRM Windows background service. This picture shows what we're trying to do. To the left, we have the test station. That's uh, the computer I'm at now. And we're trying to set up this station to post reports to the demo server located at adq4.se, here to the right. The demo server has a web service installed, it has a, a database and also web application pre-installed. So our client here, either a lab or a testing client, will post HTML report to a QRM web service that will forward it to the web service located at the demo server and then we will fetch the data through the web application to view it in the browser. To install the QRM web service, just run the setup from the installation folder, double click, select next, accept the licenses and click next to install. In this example, I actually already have QRM web service installed, then it will ask me to upgrade, else it will just install. Press next, and then you're done. After the installation has finished, open the browser, enter local host port 8080 slash QRM result. Then you will see the QRM web service. As you can see, the license is invalid because no license has been installed. And with no license, you cannot store data to database or forwarding data, except forwarding data to the adq 4 sc demo server. That will work. Uh, as you can see here, down here, this is the features that are enabled and everything is false. By default, everything is disabled in QRM. So the next thing we need to do is to actually to configure the QRM web service to enabling forwarding to the QRM demo se uh, server. Open the explorer, go into the shared documents and there's a folder called QRM. In this folder there is a configuration file. If you just edit it in notepad and scroll down to Forward settings, forwarding active is false, set that to true and forwarding URLs is already predefined to the adq4 demo server. Save and close. Now <clears throat> enter qrem result slash shutdown. Enter QRM user and the password. And then press info again. And then you can see that the forwarding is actually enabled. Now we're all set up to post and forward data to the adq4 demo server. So if I just open a new BI, you'll see that there will be a new palette here called QRM. Here are all things you can actually do to store the results. And also have G-Sharp installed. You do not need G-Sharp installed, even if I recommend it as a highly useful toolkit. 
but you don't need G-Sharp actually. Uh, there are some help files. It's a PDF uh, where all the uh, VIs are explained and also installations instruction of how to install the QRM client and do the things I do in this video actually. And so on. Uh, some troubleshooting sections as well. What's really helpful is the find example section here. If you find examples and search for QRM like this, there are actually six simple examples. I'm going to start with the first one. That's sort of the simplest possible example. That's sort of the minimum information you need to provide and as you can see here almost it's like just a few 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 VIs like this. Just some general information here about my or about the station and some information about the unit on the test like UT type and UT serial number. Over here is the QRM web service that we would like to connect to and post. And then we have some test results. We have two test results that are grouped into one test. That is grouped to the result set over here. And this one will post and then we will kill the resources over here. So if I just run like this, no errors. And I go to the web application and we can see that if I press info here, we can see we have one result request, we have one successful forward. I go to the demo server, we can see if I press info, and we see we have one result request and one successful database storage. If, and then I go to the web application, press execute, and we can see, ah, there's our example one, and here is my test, my result one, my result two. My result one, my result two, my test one. Same here. The next example I'm going to show you is the test group ex uh, example that will demonstrate the result hierarchy of QRM where you have test results generated that's part of a test and that test is also part of another test group that could be contained within another test group so you can have a real nice hierarchy in the results so if I just run this like this we can go back to see that now we have two result requests same here you press execute to see the last results here and here it is and now if I expand this you can see that we have a really nice hierarchy of results so you can sort of build up your own result hierarchy the next example I'm going to show you is the attachments example this is a really cool feature of QRM where you can actually attach files to the, to the results it could be any kind of file in this example I'm going to attach a an image and uh, append to test so if I just run this like this and then we can check uh, press info and then we can see that we have three results now but we also get one successful attachment request and successful forwarding of an attachment. And I can see here, press info, that I had got some result attachments as well. And if I go here, press execute, we can see that my example three here. And we can see that compared to this one here you can see this is just result that actually appears as a link so if I just click that it will open up in a new tab and show it directly if it's a 
file type that the web browser can show in the browser directly else you will be prompt to download it. The next example I'm going to show you is uh, called example 4 called parameters. Parameters is something you can also send along with QRM and if you have for instance have a result you can actually attach something called parameters and that could be just some setting values that you have been used when measuring the result to sort of help you know what you're measuring for instance if you have some settings of an instrument or something that really really varies but you have to be a bit careful because you generate a lot of extra information in the in the database so perhaps sometimes a if you just keep track of your configuration version would be enough but i would try to run it like this and we can see here press info yeah we got a new result check out if it has reached our server yet and it has example four if i click it here you don't see much because you have to click the parameters as well and if i do it again expand click click again you see now we have parameters attached to my test and here is the parameter showing for that test you will have parameters for all tests you have done if you if you send them along but you have to click the parameters as well yes and finally i will show you a typical application what you typically do in your lab view application is something like this you typically have a loop you typically have collected all your results in some kind of array of cluster or something like that so in this example we just generate a few for a couple of UTs and then we just generate a couple of tests for each UT and some dummy results for each test and just some random numbers here and then I just collect them in the loops here and finally post them to QRM so let's say we put in five UTs, three tests for each UT and four results for each test. So if I just run that, we can see here is the actually the HTML generated. You can get that out of the VI that actually posted. it. So you can have a look at it. It's really good to take a look at the HTML sometimes. And if I go to QRM directly like this we can see now we have example 5 and they are all failed like this and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 UTs 3 tests with 4 results each notice that the, uh, the pass fail here is totally controlled by what you actually put in here the outcome to the test so you chip you control it totally here so QRM is not so smart that it figure out which unit has passed or failed or something like that you typically set pass fail directly in your code so you have total control over what you see in in the QRM web application QRM by AdQ Consulting Try it yourself. Use the demo server at adq4.se slash qrm.